welcome to Unironically Esoteric with your host, Natasha and Stefana. This is a podcast about literally anything that comes to our mind, and this is the first episode, so mm-hmm. welcome. Welcome. So, how are you doing today? I am tired. Oh, yeah. We're very <laughs> jet-lagged, everyone. I'm still jet-lagged. Like, I I woke up at 12 o'clock today, and I'm still tired. I woke up twice. I woke up at 7 a.m., and I woke up at probably about noon. Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. podcast almost didn't happen y'all I was I mean I was late um it was me I was it was supposed to be at one and I pushed it back to 2 14 and then I also was still late and we started at three Mm -hmm. and I'm also still late because Mm -hmm. it did not start at three it started at 3 49 so I didn't even realize it was that late. <laughs> it's okay. You know, sometimes you need a late start and it, we're, we're here and that's all that matters. Yeah. Jet lag and everything. So yeah. welcome to the podcast, y'all. Okay. So first thing let's talk about is, you know, how, how is your week going? How, and you have any updates, any things that you're doing? We don't usually ask each other what we're doing on the weekend. So what are you we doing don't. this weekend? This weekend? Um, I don't really have much going on this weekend. I do have to go to the store and buy um, my niece a birthday present because she's turning three. She's so sweet. She's so funny. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm working on, oh, I am working on finishing my painting because I'm an artiste (laughs) and I'm currently painting the Eiffel Tower. From scratch. We love it. (laughs) It's actually a paint by numbers <laughs> because I'm an incredibly novice painter, but we're getting there. It's just, this is the first step. <laughs> That's all I'm at. Sometimes the first step is what you have to do. So congratulations <laughs> on your Eiffel Tower painting, Miss Artiste. If you say it, you believe it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm an, I'm a painter. I'm a pianist. I am versed in multiple languages. Like... <laughs> All these things are going to be true <laughs> one day okay. in the near future. <laughs> near future. Okay. We love that. Yeah. Oh, and I'm also an author just like you. So. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. We are trying to write a book. Um, We'll give you guys updates as we go because writing a book is hard. Okay. Yes. I did not realize how difficult writing a book was. Mm-hmm. We have not even started the writing process. Mm-mm. We're still doing the before part of like figuring out like we have the plot we're not going to tell you because it's a secret Mm -hmm. um you'll find out eventually uh we have the plot we have the characters we know what like we know what we want to happen but we have to have little challenges every week to make sure that we actually complete the goals that we're having because I mean if you left it up to me I will put it off and put it off put it off so because it's something that we wanted to do we decided to make sure that we have like you know a consequence if you do not Mm -hmm. do this this weekend if you don't meet your goal that you set then somebody has to do something for the other person but we're also very bad with that because if it's like oh if you don't write two pages then you have to give up twenty dollars that's fine here's your twenty dollars that ain't an issue like that is not a problem so it had to be something a little bit uh more serious of something that we don't want to do like you have to work on this for me and it's Mm -hmm. like oh I don't want to do that so Mm -hmm. um we do have to do that I have not started my weekend challenge but I will be doing it (laughs) it's due Monday (laughs) it's due Monday but we got it (laughs) what's crazy about this book is that or these books because they're two separate books is that we both like they both came to us in dreams (laughs) Mine actually was not necessarily a dream. I do have some ideas mm-hmm. that were a dream, but mine came when I was walking the dog. Something happened uh, on the news, and I was like, oh my gosh, how 
I had questions about it and I came up with the scenario and then I realized oh no this is not a scenario that I would like to take part in and then I was like oh my gosh I should write a book about this if this mm-hmm. scenario does happen mm-hmm. um, I'm sorry that we're being so vague but it's a secret it's a secret I will tell you mine is very like set in like old almost like England times <laughs> But yeah, that's all I can tell you. And there's royalty involved. Mine also has royalty involved, but it is not set in England times. It is set in today slash future times. Mm. So watch somebody like guess the plot. (laughs) I mean, our (laughs) non-existent (laughs) listeners right now, like they're probably like, ooh, I know what you're talking about. They're gonna like mine's would be the one to be guessed. Like I feel like I've already given it away. I don't think there's I feel like mine is more like, you know, like your typical like romance book. Yours is I think yours has more depth to it. Like there's more going on. That's the problem. There's too much depth. I don't know if any of the listeners have ever written a book or anything if you guys have leave a comment mm-hmm. let us know comment because I'm very interested to see the process and how this goes because it is so difficult to like try to narrow it down because I have a lot of ideas and a lot of things that could happen but like you can't put too much I mean I've read books where they put way too much information in it yeah. I like the extra information but sometimes it's just too much and it's like okay you could have cut that out you could have cut that out Mm -hmm. and then I've also read books where they don't put enough information in it and it just leaves you hanging it's like this doesn't make sense because there's not enough information there's too many gaps in it so Mm -hmm. trying to maintain that balance is like very difficult for me and I'm not even at the writing part yet so I'm just going to do what I usually do word vomit it out and then I'll fix it as I go I think that works the best for me yeah I'm just worried that I won't have enough to put it into it because I'm like very straight and to the point with like everything so (laughs) I don't know I just need to work on adding the fluff yeah I am gonna have to work on the dialogue so Mm -hmm. that part's gonna be rough and if it's mine is like romance as well I feel like writing romance is difficult I, I just, I don't know. How do you write it? What's going to happen? Yeah. Like, the daydreams that you have are going to have to like be put on paper and like mm-hmm. some of it doesn't, y'all ever have a dream and it doesn't make sense because there's so many open gaps in a dream. Mm-hmm. How do you fill that in? I don't know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. to be continued, mm-hmm. um, let us know listeners, if you have something that you want to do that you might be struggling with because I mean, we're mid twenties and trying to do have like a nice work life balance mm-hmm. is kind of difficult and then working on things that you want to work on yeah is also it's I mean we're all in this together we're all struggling here and yeah. we're still in a pandemic so yeah tell us your struggles and also tell us how you commit to those things because as you heard I am trying to learn multiple things piano I'm trying to paint I'm trying to learn another language I'm trying to write a book so just tell us how you I guess organized your lives and how you commit to completing your tasks that you said please especially if anyone out there is trying to learn a language too let us know because that's also something we decided to take on Mm -hmm. um I'm trying to learn Japanese and Korean again because I started it and put it down and started it and put it down And that's also very difficult to do. So let us know what makes you, how do you keep it up? How do you Mm -hmm. keep studying? How do you practice, especially if you don't have like a native speaker, Mm -hmm. like beside you? I know there's like apps and stuff, but. Yeah. So especially if you guys are learning Korean, like tell us what you're doing. Teach me your ways because I'm trying to learn it as well. Like, let us know like what apps you're using let us know like any routines that you're doing let us know if you're taking like any online classes please I'm begging you because I'm trying (laughs) (laughs) okay um now on to our esoteric segment (laughs) okay so now we have some random questions um Mm -hmm. Like, like the name says, um, 
unironically esoteric obviously we have to have an esoteric question segment Mm -hmm. um as you've learned a lot of the things that we do and we're trying to learn and work on and have this work-life balance um some of them come from dreams and ideas random things that we have and this is going to be the same thing like these questions like we may have like a theme of like oh these are our questions and Mm -hmm. it lines up with so-and-so but we don't know because it's random Mm -hmm. um today I have a question I have had many of dreams (laughs) that relate to this I this question and this idea and I would like to know your opinion and listeners I also want to know your opinions because it's very funny and very random Mm -hmm. so first question is if an apocalypse started like tomorrow like something Mm -hmm crazy happened what are your first steps like I'm talking like doomsday prep like are you gonna cry I would cry first and then yeah me too I actually (laughs) I don't know I don't know if I would cry I think I would be like so overwhelmed with stress (laughs) I don't think I would cry until like afterwards (laughs) um first thing I'm doing crying immediately uh second thing uh I know I'm I'm in my mid twenties. I'm calling my dad. Uh, where are you at? We don't live in the same place. How do I meet up with you? What do I do? Uh, do I need to get weapons? Like, mm-hmm. how do I get there? Mm-hmm. Um, I have dreams where I'm driving home and all of a sudden you just see, you know, the sky is orange. <laughs> Somebody dropped something, something crazy <laughs> happened. And I'm like trying to drive in the woods. I'm like, Wait, where's you my dream like home? this often? <laughs> Yes, I have dreams like this at least, you know, a couple times a oh, month. No. I I haven't oh, had no. it in the last week. I've had like normal dreams. I dream every day, and I always remember all of my dreams. Mm-hmm. But not a month goes by that I don't have some type of apocalyptic or dinosaur, oh, wow. something about aliens, something about I don't know. That the be... dinosaur ones. I always have dinosaur dreams. And the dinosaur horrible. ones are nice. Sometimes no. they talk. <laughs> no oh, never mind <laughs> they are scary but some of the dinosaur dreams that I have are not that bad um but I do we'll talk about my dreams I'll, we'll have a segment like oh what did you hear about this week girl mm-hmm. um but yeah the apocalypse I'm always trying to I'm always having dreams about the apocalypse somehow or like the world has ended and we have to get somewhere you have to connect with your friend like I don't know but I would cry first then I'd call my dad and I'd probably try to get to my family. I would hope it's not something like a zombie apocalypse because honestly, not to sound depressing, but do I want to live through that? <laughs> do I want to have to, I mean, y'all have seen The Walking Dead. Do I want to fight these zombies and like try to like live in like terror and hide? Like, I don't want to just give up and like get bitten and like, but who wants to live in an apocalyptic or post apocalyptic world? I feel like I wouldn't mind. I mean, I would obviously care <laughs> zombies, but this is going to sound real morbid, but like, say I was like the only one left like in my family, I would still keep going because that's less this is gonna sound horrible this that's sort of like less of a weight on me (laughs) to have to worry about taking care of those people so I feel like I would be able to do it no that's a good point um I don't know I wouldn't want to just give up because I feel like that goes against what I think I feel like you gotta keep going but at the same time it's like dang if I'm gonna be like alone I feel like I wouldn't have a good grasp on reality so I don't know I feel like I could deal with certain post-apocalyptic stuff like I don't know there was a solar flare and it took you out like I mean y'all have seen what was this what was the movie 2012 where Mm -hmm. the tsunami came in like I feel like I could deal with stuff like that or like oh we have to go to space like I feel like those things I could deal with but if it's like apocalypse like animals and creatures are coming and like murdering and killing us Mm -hmm. I I don't know I don't know I don't know how I deal with that so I've had a few alien dreams where like they've come down and they're like infecting people, like mm-hmm. taking over their bodies. I don't know. And I'm like, do I do I want to be nervous? Like now you got to question everyone around you. Like, are you infested? Are you did you get bit? I don't know. So that's my apocalyptic question of the day. So <laughs> <sighs> I feel like for me, I 
I don't know, like I said, I wouldn't cry first. I would probably be in like panic mode. Like I would like obviously get like my grandma because she lives like 10 minutes away. And then we would go from there because we don't really have, we would probably all die (laughs) because we don't really have, like, I mean, my sister has a weapon, but we don't really have a lot of survival items, which is actually something that I'm working on. So I didn't tell you this yet, but last month I decided that like every time I get paid, I'm going to buy at least one survival item. And this is not like... it makes me sound very paranoid, but <laughs> just, I don't remember what I was watching. I was watching some movie and I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I think it was World War Z. <laughs> I'm <talking about> <laughs> All the zombies. And I was I, like, we need, I'm not doing it because of zombies, but for like anything like natural disasters or something. Like, so I decided I'm going to buy like one survival item every time I get paid it could be like a like a can of beans or a pack of batteries or Mm. those life straw things oh yeah those are good or or a backpack or one of those like aluminum blanket sort of things I don't know what they're made of they look like aluminum to me I think but mm -hmm, yeah do stuff like that I and I think it's incredibly beneficial just in case something like a hurricane or something comes through and we might need those items so I think that's a good tip to have a tip from Stefana for the day. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. I have a survival kit in my car Mm -hmm. um, with like a shovel. It has like knife or scissors or something like a Swiss army thingy. Mm -hmm. Um, And some of those items get a first aid kit. Mm -hmm. The first aid kit is very important. And one thing I do want to get, which I probably will do my next paycheck too, is CPR. One, y'all get certified in CPR training. It mm-hmm. is very beneficial. Like even if you think that you don't need it, do it on Amazon or anywhere on the web. There is like a, it's something that help dislodge something from like if you're choking. The de um, I think it's called the. Called yeah, the you just put it over and then like I think you like press into it and it like mm-hmm. suction cups whatever is out. Mm-hmm. And I think that is something that everyone should have in their house. Every everywhere should have it because when it comes to like CPR and like the Heimlich maneuver and stuff, like you think that you have it under control. And I work pretty decent in like stressful situations, but I've never had a situation where someone could die from like inaction. So get yeah. CPR certified, learn the Heimlich maneuver, have these things. It's a little bit expensive, but it is better to pay a little bit of money for safety stuff versus paying to be in the hospital or paying for a funeral or something. So Mm -hmm. to tack on to your tip, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Also invest in weapons. I'm not talking about like just guns. I'm talking about axes, machetes, (laughs) chainsaws, just anything because anything could be used as a weapon. Get some rope. You never know why, Mm -hmm. like when you might need rope. So I just you, say, you never know when you need to tie someone up. I was like, why are you tying? You might need up? to do that too. Sure, you might need to like <laughs> hold someone. Never mind. I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> I'm talking about apocalypse wise, not like everyday regular you life. Do not get rope and tie people up, people. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much my my tips for the apocalypse about your necessities and supplies. But I was also thinking just regular, like (laughs) every day, like imagine that you were like a celebrity, like a famous singer or something. What would be the necessities that you must have like on your tour bus? Because I was reading an article the other day. It was a BuzzFeed article and it was giving examples of celebrities and like Kanye West, like he had like two like slushy machines uh, with alcohol like one of them was like Hennessy and I think it was like coke or something and the other one for Kim was lemonade and gray goose so yeah I just got to thinking like what would I need and I feel like I wouldn't need much I would just need like the basic things like toiletries and stuff but one thing I think I would need is like this is gonna be so random like an apple juice slushy machine (laughs) because I feel like I would get very nauseous and I feel like that would help with that Yeah, like being on the tour bus for all that time and then also uh, a playstation that's it true true I think that's all I would need what would I need I would need um 
shower shoes, <laughs> cleaning supplies. <laughs> Y'all, I get the heebie-jeebies when it comes to like bathrooms. I would need mm-hmm. heavy cleaning supplies, mm-hmm. shower shoes. I can like comfortably shower. Um, what else would I need? I would also like a game system like a PlayStation, my Switch, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And they have Wi-Fi on these buses, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to say that's pretty much it. Like, I'm pretty basic. I mean, food. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything specific that I would need. Um, That's pretty much it. Just, like, mostly cleaning supplies and then, like, entertainment. I feel like there's – I feel like for you, there's more that you would need. You're just – that's true not digging deep enough i feel like i I feel like you like a blanket yeah (laughs) okay so those are things that i want to carry myself though Mm -hmm. like i want my own blanket i want my own comforters my oh i need my my water pillow that is a hundred percent something i need water pillow my i get neck issues y'all so i have a water pillow you fill it up with water it stays cold all the time it's kind of a downer in the winter time because now it's cold and you don't want it to be super freezing my pillowcase soap pillowcase obviously you got to keep your hair you sleep with the water pillow every night yep Hmm. if i can travel with it like i could the only reason i don't travel with it is because obviously it's very large um Mm -hmm. it's a pillow and i don't want to take it on the plane Mm because i you want to be careful about you can wash your pillows but you want to be careful because there's like a water bag in it Mm -hmm. um but yeah i would need my water pillow so i don't have neck pain um probably some books Mm-hmm. I'm trying to live the life of luxury on this thing. I need to feel like I'm at home. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said I feel like you would personally need more than uh-huh. what you're saying because I know you want to be at like max comfort level all the time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Dang, I sound bougie, y'all. I'm not that bougie. <laughs> no, she's not. She's not. <laughs> I just like to have certain things. Like when I travel, like I I have to have my shower shoes. Have to be stuff has to be clean. I have to have a blanket because I like to be warm. A heating pad would be nice if we're really about to like stack this thing out food the fridge needs to be stocked i want homemade food i want uh jamaican food i want my mom's cooking okay i want some korean food japanese food like all types of food um spanish food some tacos in there some beans like i want snacks snacks on deck all the chips all of the not even all the chips i need to eat chips like that ramen love mm-hmm. me some ramen and some ramyun mm-hmm. add it on there i need that mm-hmm. i can't live without that Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's it. Now I think that we've touched on the basics of things that I need. Mm-hmm. I, I need a lot Sorry. of things, <laughs> and it probably depends on how long I'd be on this on this tour bus. Like, how mm-hmm. long am I going to be on here? Is mm-hmm. it a week? Is it a month? The list could go on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, those are like, like the top months, right? Probably at least a month. It doesn't yeah. seem worth it to go for like a couple of days mm-hmm. or a couple of weeks, even. So mm-hmm. that's what yeah. I would bring okay and a weapon so i can feel safe yeah let us know what you guys would bring as well i'm curious yeah if you guys have a longer list than me please add it because i would feel a lot better (laughs) (laughs) so yeah and i'd bring my kitty cat Mm, i love her so yeah as long as i have my cat i don't need any Mm -hmm. my dog's not coming (laughs) <laughs> so you would, yeah, you would yeah. kill everybody you have, like, you have to walk your dog too though yeah so that's kind of like i just had to a litter box and bring the cat mm-hmm. so maybe i'll get like i'll i've always wanted a bunny maybe i'll get a bunny they need a lot of them. On tour. i thought about getting a, um a guinea pig i just let them loose on the toy bus on the what on the tour bus <laughs> <laughs> i thought about getting a guinea pig the other day and i was like no you don't need that I saw this girl having a pet guinea pig and she was like petting it. And I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, I want a guinea pig. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. You have to get two guinea pigs, by the way, y'all. If you didn't know, mm-hmm. you have to have two. They mm-hmm. buddy buddy system. Mm-hmm. Um, they will get really lonely and they can get sick and they can die if you only have one guinea pig. So make sure you have two and make sure mm-hmm. you research your animals too. Is that the same with hamsters or no? Maybe that's why Steve died. <laughs> Steve was a hamster that we had with our roommate in college and first of all don't be like us don't just get a pet just because you can um yeah he he just got sick we didn't even know he was sick we ended up giving him to my sister 
and then next thing I know she called me and she was crying she was like Steve is dead (laughs) (laughs) what happened and she doesn't know what happened and they ended up taking him to like a pet cemetery (laughs) and burying him I didn't know that. Project. Steve was not my pet, y'all. I am scared of hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. When I was younger, I had a friend, I used to live in Japan, and she had a pet hamster. But this hamster bit, okay? And she mm-hmm. told me, like, yeah, this hamster will bite. You gotta be careful. And I never held the hamster because I was like, I don't, I don't want to get bit. So I've never lost that fear. So this was not my hamster because I'm terrified of them. Yeah. But RIP, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> moral of the story don't get a hamster if you can't take care of it make sure it's healthy and if you're gonna get a guinea pig get two <laughs> just don't have any pets y'all you don't need yeah. them. they're a lot of work and they cost a lot of money don't have any pets mm-hmm. i was gonna say also don't take advice from us but <laughs> <laughs> this is not an advice podcast okay anything that we say is our opinion Mm-hmm. okay we are not professionals mm-hmm. so whatever we say take it with a grain of salt I gotta yeah. add that to you okay so I talked a lot about my goals about writing and painting and all that stuff but I want to hear about more about your goals Natasha um I also have a counter question to that what okay. made you let me get my interview voice on what made you think of your goals like what made you come to your your goals and I'll answer that to you one number um, I, I think I'm just someone who likes to learn and I want to be more well-rounded, mm. I guess. So I want to be more artistic because I'm always, I've always been very like, I guess, book smart, I guess. So I'm working on a different side of myself. I want to paint. I want to paint more. I want to play piano. I just want to be a better person. I guess. And I feel like having those artistic outlets will help with that. Um, I agree. I think that's very good reasons. I mean, anything that you want to do, that's like bettering yourself is a great reason. And you don't need a reason to do any of it. But yeah, um, to answer your question, I have a few things that I want to do. Like I want to write the book. I've been saying that for like six, eight months. I've been saying this for a long time that I want to write a book because my dreams are so crazy and I just have not done it. Mm-hmm. Um, Stefana actually has written a book. She's oh, I have it. I have. It's she's a, a true Arthur. Oh my goodness. I just, Arthur. I'm pretty much done with it. I just need someone to illustrate it. It's true. It's um, about a turtle. That's all I'll say. <laughs> it's very good. It's very cute. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to be like Stefana. No, I'm just kidding. I <laughs> <laughs> want to just start achieving my goals. I feel like I was very ambitious as a child and like even going into college. I mean, I think if you graduated college, I mean, good. Yeah. Like that's great. Like we made it. So undergrad is hard girl. And she has her master's. So was your master's easier? Yeah. It was a lot easier. Surprisingly. I felt like I got burnt out after college. I went to school. I went to college. I finished. I got my degree and then, you know, after you graduate, um, you're kind of like, what do I do now? I think this is also what has contributed to, like, things that I want to do and, like, this podcast because, mm-hmm. I mean, I wish I had a podcast like this. Just talking about achieving goals and, like, work-life balance and stuff yeah. when I was younger mm-hmm. and kind of to have, like, better expectations of life. Mm-hmm. Um, you're never too old to start doing the things that you want to do and I think I was getting to the point that I was like you know what I keep on saying like I don't have time for this or I want to do I want to do this I want to do that and I'm not doing it and I can only blame myself because I if I look at my screen time I have a lot of screen time Mm -hmm. I could easily be using the time that I'm on my phone to do something else that I could see progress for long term and I think realizing that doing the stuff that you want to do is not just going to be easy and you might not have like that immediate satisfaction of like oh I did this but you can have like the satisfaction of like oh you know what I did this step and I'm proud of myself for Mm -hmm. taking another step forward like you're not going to be a super great pianist overnight but you're better than you were 
if you didn't do anything and you know so that's kind of what made me really start trying to do all the things I want to do I want to get better at like my drawing and my sketching and stuff I have my dreams really have like shaped a lot of the things that I want to do and not to freak anyone out because my dreams are so crazy but I see stuff in my dreams I'm like I wish I could draw that out so that way I can explain like my dreams are very very vivid they feel very real and sometimes I want to draw out what I'm thinking I'm the only person that knows exactly what I saw in my dream Mm -hmm. so I was like oh let me start doing you know getting better at my night notice the difference I was doing a lot better with my drawing and then I stopped my sister is a great artist like she she's really really good Mm -hmm. and I'm like oh I'm not as super great as yours and she's just like why don't you just practice like it takes practice Mm -hmm. and when she said that I was like that's it like (laughs) I just have to practice okay I guess and she was correct (laughs) like I started practicing and I was like oh this doesn't look good this doesn't look that bad you know I bought a tablet y'all I bought a Samsung Galaxy tab y'all know how expensive that is because I was like oh I want to do animation I want to draw and I mean that tablet is the best money I've spent money on I use that thing all the time do I use it just for the drawing (laughs) No, I don't. I use it to go on and watch my TV shows and to read and stuff. And even then, at some point, I stopped. I feel like I just wait. I feel like like <laughs> a psychiatrist or psychologist is gonna watch this and be like, "These girls have some serious mental issues that they need to talk about because of like all the different activities that we're doing and we're not able to concentrate on just one thing." I just. <laughs> I mean y'all I start things and I'm like oh I want all the best I was like on practice drawing I got acrylic paints and I was like you know acrylic is not my vibe I tried to get new brushes but that's not my vibe Mm -hmm. tried to do watercolor I got the best you know not the best where it's like coins but like oh this is like top notch but like good price got Mm -hmm. the watercolor I was like you know watercolor isn't it's not my medium then I got gouache gouache is my medium I do like that I got the brush I did not get the correct brushes but I got the brushes for a couple of weeks I was like sticking to it I'm looking at the paints right now they just (laughs) (laughs) and you know what the other day I and then when I moved I was like oh okay I have my little reading nook set up great I was like you know I want the gouache that's that's the jelly gouache that's in the tins you don't need that you have the tube gouache that you spent hours like researching and getting Mm -hmm. no so now I have two different types of gouache I have two different types of water paint I have multiple types of acrylic paint and they're just sitting there so that's something I was I want to work on Mm -hmm. my sketching my drawing I have a reading challenge because I used to read a lot of books when I was younger I love reading don't know what happened I stopped reading I like I would be plowing through books and I somehow you mean you guys see this is like a book this is two bookshelves and they're like filled to the brim like this is like two rows of books like there's a row of books behind this um so and there's a third level and then I also have a bookshelf across from me and there's a bookshelf beside me I have a lot of books Mm -hmm. so I was like oh I want to read my books so I set a reading challenge of like I'm gonna do 35 books a year that did not sound like a lot to me I am only eight books in maybe nine and I am four months I originally set it for 50 and then I had read like two books and it was like you were 10 books behind I was like (laughs) I bumped it down to 35 and my aunt she was like 35 books that's oh she's like if you were gonna do 50 that's like a book a week and she said that and I was like oh yeah you know I didn't think about it like that I don't know what 35 books I want to say that's about three books a month if I want to do 35 three times 12 is 36 so yeah about three books a month Mm -hmm. um I did just read three books in three days so we're picking up steam but what ends up happening is I'll stop and I won't read for like a month and then I'll like binge read Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to be more consistent with that Mm -hmm. language learning that's another thing and maybe we have too many things that we're trying to do I think that's what it is (laughs) I know what it is but I usually have different things that I want to do at a different time so sometimes for months I just want to paint 
I can't even be consistent with that. And then sometimes it's like, okay, I want to write this book that'll be like eight months of me saying like, I want to write this book and then I'm still not doing it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if that's not working, you got to just do all of it. (laughs) (laughs) Do everything at once once and it'll work out. We'll see. It's been working out a lot better. Um, and having friends to do it with like, um, it's helpful. Um, it's like a nice, I wouldn't even call it competition. It's just accountability. It's nice to have accountability buddy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to say like my number one goal is not number one. That's like, but like up there, like my top three things I want to do mm-hmm. in 2020 mm-hmm. that are out just like creative things outside of like work goals is I want to be healthier. Mm-hmm. Like I want to like work out, like I have a very well-rounded diet. That's great. But I am not as active as I would like to be. So I would like to be more active. I want to be consistent with how many times I work out a month, I mean, a week, whatever it is. Um, I want to write this book. It may not be the completion, but I would like to at least have like maybe a quarter of it, mm-hmm. like on paper, like with dialogue written by the end of the year. I feel like that's mm-hmm something that may be achievable yeah book writers out there let me know if that's achievable or if this is like a crazy a crazy goal to set Mm -hmm. and um I'd like to read 35 books this year Mm -hmm. those are like my top three that I'm working towards and I feel like that's achievable yeah you gotta do it you can do it if you put your mind to it Okay. okay but yeah I agree with what you're saying especially the part where you're talking about, you know, working out. I, I think it's, if you're going to do anything, I think the main thing that you should focus on in your life is your physical and mental health. Yes, I think, because if you don't have like those secured, like you can't really do much else. So I think if anyone's struggling, just try to focus on that. Just try to be mindful of everything. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to jeopardize your mental health and just try to relax and enjoy life and we were just talking about college if any like current college students or anyone in grad school needs any help or advice feel free to reach out to us because we are more than willing to tell you guys what we know and help out yeah I agree that's very (laughs) sweet too once again we're all about work-life balance and doing the things that we like to do Mm -hmm. in your free time period Mm -hmm. yep so yeah um it is now we've been here for a while Mm -hmm. like an hour Mm -hmm. so if you guys like the podcast let us know Mm -hmm. thanks for listening to our random ramblings we don't know what we're gonna talk about next week Mm -hmm. (laughs) i mean random times too so Mm -hmm. let us know if you like it if you have any ideas for the next podcast Mm -hmm. or non-existent listeners Mm -hmm. um let us know yeah please let us know because we would really like to interact with you guys as well that sounds so know fun. your opinions <laughs> and also i can't tell you guys what we're gonna talk about next week so i can't even give you guys like a, a preview i'm sorry we don't know <laughs> um, we probably won't know until the day before that we yeah. record this yeah. so um stay tuned it's, mm-hmm. it's gonna keep the surprises coming so mm-hmm. Thank you. you like it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for watching <laughs> Unironically Esoteric. Ding. Ding. I'm going to work on a jingle with my piano. I'll send it to you. <laughs> uh.